after uh, some short but kind of rough carries, we are finally here at the lake we're gonna camp on. I'm gonna start looking for the lean-to now, fish our way around a little bit, and uh, see if we can come up with something before we get to our campsite. Should be nice. Hopefully the lean-to is open, and uh, we'll be able to sleep in that tonight because that's just my favorite way of camping. Look at this beautiful lake we've got here. See a single other person around. Amazing. As I paddled across this beautiful lake here with Stephanie, I had no idea what was truly in store for me the week ahead. I had heard good things about the camping, fishing, and canoeing in this little remote scattering of lakes and ponds here in the Adirondack Mountains, but it turned out to be so much more than I could have hoped for, or maybe even asked for, as you'll see later on. I had already been out in the woods for about a week at this point, guiding hiking trips for Garnet Hill Lodge near 13th Lake, and I had to go straight from this trip that you see me on here to guiding a canoe trip with a group of students on Long Lake. I had a short window of time to get in my own solo canoe trip, but I figured it wouldn't hurt to get Stephanie out with me too for the first night before she had to return back to work. So something kind of new in my kit on this trip would be these NRS boundary boots, completely waterproof. And I really like them. They really get the job done for getting in and out of those wet, muddy portages. The only thing that I could say against them is do not let them go up. Do not let the water go up past here. I mean, it's not like I thought that the gasket here would be that great, but uh, yeah, there's a few, there's a few deep spots out here where you have to put your canoe in on these, uh, on these ponds and lakes back here. And I definitely, I definitely went over on them. Socks are completely soaked. Yeah, so dinner tonight is going to be Fairly simple. Some korma curry. We've got some premium white chicken. Premium in a bag. <laughs> and uh, some rice. Forgot the naan bread, but should still be pretty filling like this. And uh, later tonight, as a little treat, I have the Dutch oven with me. Some muffin baking pans what is that called muffin pan. a, a muffin, muffin pan. pan a muffin tin and some chocolate chip muffin mix try something new huh yeah So I've let the fire burn down a bit here while still being pretty hot. And I'm gonna let the Dutch oven heat up on top of it. And uh, I don't know, after 10, 15 minutes, I'm gonna throw the muffins in and see how it goes. Should be interesting. Why did I do that? Oh my God. Yes, it was. All right. Let's see if this is a success or a failure or what we got going on here. Oh 
might have overdone them a little bit. Darn. I had the temperature a little too high. Okay. They're a little soft in the middle, but they're good. How is it? It's good. It's a decent little experiment. Yeah. I think if we did this a few more times, we'd probably get Maybe the hang of like, it. Um... You didn't need heat on top, maybe like longer at like a lower temperature, then maybe the middle would have cooked better. Maybe. I'm gonna crawl in here, read a little bit of my book, and then uh, it is off to bed for us. See you guys in the morning. Look at this beautiful view we wake up to here. That's something special. As you can see, got a little morning fire going. Gonna let this burn down into some coals. And then cook a little breakfast over it. Crazy nest up in that tree there. It's gotta be like an eagle's nest or an osprey nest or something like that. That's huge. Haven't seen anything coming or going from it, so might be abandoned. But man, that is so cool. Hey, we got a fish here finally. Doesn't feel gigantic, but it's most likely a little rainbow. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice little rainbow. Hey, we got him in the net. gonna wet my hands real quick oh, nice colors on that night on that rainbow trout there 
definitely wild, not stocked. Uh, I don't know, actually. Look at his back fin. That actually might be hatchery damage. Either way, though, an absolutely beautiful fish. Temperatures are cold. Water's cold, so we should have a release here in a moment. Off he goes. I think Stephanie's got a fish here, but something's up with her reel. It keeps... No, Dad, it upset all of the earth. Oh. She had one on there. I saw it. Let me see that. Hand me that rod. The drag is crazy low. Hey, I got a decent sized feeling fish here. Wow, it's really, it's giving me a fight. Whoa, this could be something nice. Wow, that's a beautiful brook trout. Whoa! Don't come off. Get in the net. Please. Oh no. No, don't do that, don't do that. I do. This is a really big brook trout. <sighs> Look at the colors on that guy. Now that is not a hatchery fish. You see those white, very white prominent fins, those super blue halos and the vermiculation at the top here that almost looks like a worm pattern. That black mouth. Oh boy. Oh man. I love catching brook trout. What a beautiful little specimen that was. Wow. I knew I had a good one on right from the start there. I mean he very he hit it very lightly, but uh once he felt that hook was in him, the fight was on. Yeah, so I just saw Stephanie off. We said our goodbyes in the parking lot, made our plans for pickup and everything. I explained the way to get out of here to her, so hopefully she's not gonna have any trouble with that. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get right back in the canoe down here. I'm probably just gonna pass right through the pond I was on and get back on the lake that my campsite's on. Get back there, make a little lunch, but of course fish the whole way through. And then, uh, I don't know, we'll see what we do from there. I really like paddling with this single blade. I feel like if I practiced it enough, I'd be just as proficient in it as, uh, the double blade. I mean, I have no problem paddling. I, obviously, I mean, I have no problem paddling like this one were tandem, so I don't know why I think it'd be any different solo. A little windy out here, but uh, hey, I'm gonna try to fish my way back to the campsite before I make some lunch. Heck, if I catch a nice rainbow, maybe that could be lunch. Holy cripes, I think we got a salmon here. Wow. He annihilated that. My rod was twitching like a pike. Oh, it's a big rainbow. Oh! Darn. Oh, man. Oh, 
That's a bummer. Wow. That was a big rainbow. Whew. As you can tell, it's pretty windy out here, and I'm definitely... <coughs> Definitely having a little trouble with the single blade in the wind like this. But uh, I'm quickly learning. I mean, I don't have to switch sides every time, but I don't seem to be able to do a J stroke the whole, the whole time just on one side because the wind, like you see now, is catching the front of it and throwing it this way, even, even as I try to fight it like that. Wow. Man, I really thought I had a big landlocked salmon on there the way he slammed that, but I saw the pink stripe. That was a really nice rainbow. Wow. Yeah, when the wind's not blowing me all over the place, pedaling like this is pretty easy. Yes, so I am back at the lean-to now. I'm letting my boots dry out. Over here, I've got my wool base layer and my wool socks drying out. They're pretty much almost dry actually already, just sitting like that. The socks I was just wearing, the one I got swamped in my boots. And now I think it's just time to whip up a little lunch. Wait till a little later when the sun starts going down. Bring a nice drink out there with me. Maybe try to catch a few more of those trout. Man, I just... I'm so happy to be on a few fish here. It feels so good. A few really good fish too. That's, that's, that's what really cinches it for me. I'm real glad I came out here. I wasn't sure really where I wanted to do this trip for this week because... I only had this one window to get out before the end of brook trout season, so I knew I wanted to go somewhere with some brook trout, but I was like, oh, well, St. Regis really let me down in the spring. Did I want to spend a week there and possibly end up, you know, with a wicked slow week of fishing like I did last time? Do I want to go back to that unnamed trout lake that's done so well for me, but wouldn't involve any distance or moving around much? And that's what made me settle on this. There's enough other bodies of water around here and species of fish that I can keep things varied up. It's a beautiful lean-to here, some beautiful other campsites out there. I think this is going to make for a real nice, real enjoyable my last week of brook trout fishing. There's a few ponds I want to check out tomorrow, and uh, I'm not sure. I might spend one more night in here tomorrow so that I can fish this other pond I want to get at, and uh, eh, maybe Tuesday. We'll move on to one of the lower ponds. We'll see what's in there. I got a I got a little sheet on my phone that tells me what's in what lake and pond and everything. So yeah, we'll figure it out tonight together, huh? Well, it's about six o'clock now. Wind's starting to die down. I figure I might as well get out there and fish a little bit. I'm not really sure where I'm gonna go because it would be kind of far to go where I was catching those rainbows earlier. And you know, I've probably only got like an hour, hour and a half of light left. So I don't know, maybe this bay I'm in right here, I'll fish a little bit, paddle around it, throw some panther martins or something. We'll see. It's a beautiful night out there. Hey, we got something here. Small, whatever it is. What the heck? Is that a brown trout? Oh my god. 
gosh, he got himself so wrapped up in the line. There you go, you gotta look at him. I just cast my line out and didn't even start trolling yet. Close the bale, and I've got a fish on here. <laughs> Look at the size of this guy. Wow. That is a beautiful little bluegill there. There's coyotes right over there, listen. I don't know if the GoPro can hear it. At first I thought it was people screaming. Those are coyotes. Yeah, I am definitely flush with firewood at this campsite. I got a whole bunch of it here. Nice fire going. And then a whole lot more like kindling and smaller stuff over here. So, I am set for today and tomorrow, I think. And right now, just working on a little dinner. I'm gonna heat up this water, a little goulash, and a little sour cream and chive mashed potatoes simple but effective should be good i'm gonna get that water boiling right now usually put just enough in there to cover whatever it is up and now i'll throw the lid on that to keep it warm I'll probably have to heat that water up again one more time for the potatoes once this is ready. Because I know these will cool down pretty quick. So, yeah, just gonna wait for all this to come together and it'll be dinner time. Well, it's getting late and I want to get up early to try to do some fishing, so I think it's time for me to turn in here. Threw a few more logs on the fire before I go to bed. I'm just gonna get this turned off. See you guys in the morning. <laughs> Look at that scene I wake up to. There is just a total blanket of fog on the lake. I can barely see the small islands on the other side there. Yeah, I only had to wait about 20, 30 minutes, and uh, the sun coming out burnt all that right off the water there. Still a tiny bit of fog, but I'll definitely be able to get out there and navigate now. Whew. Chilly morning, that's for sure. Dropped below freezing last night. I think 26 degrees, it said. Oh, it is that time of year. 
That's for sure. Well, I trolled the wobblers around out here for about an hour and just got done trolling around some of these Northland tackle deep divers thinking that maybe I could pick up a landlocked salmon in this deeper water but well, I'm getting a bit hungry I figure I'll get in and make some breakfast here and uh, after I'm done with that get all the dishes cleaned up I'll pack my gear up what well, you know like a little day pack up and head over to the nearby pond that's supposed to have brook trout and I'll get back to trolling with the wobbler and see if maybe we can pick up a couple nice brookies over there. Wouldn't mind keeping one or two for lunch if uh, if the opportunity presents itself. You know, if I can catch a couple small ones. I wouldn't want to keep one that was big. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. First we gotta work on breakfast. I'm really surprised I didn't have any any even bites or hookups or anything out here. I saw some really good marks on the depth finder. Really nice size. Water temperature is about 58 right now, which seems like about that time that they start hitting a little shallower, but I don't know. We'll see. Still got a lot of time. And plus I know I can go over to where I caught those rainbows and probably find them again if I wanted to. Oh, absolutely beautiful day out here. Yeah, I figured I might as well get a nice little morning fire going here. Why not? I'm gonna be hanging out for a minute anyway, cooking and Cutting up some onions and peppers and getting some eggs cooked. I'm gonna make a little breakfast wrap here. Should be nice on this cold morning. The fire feels great.
Not bad. Gotta put a little breakfast sauce on it now and wolf it down. Well, had a nice breakfast there. Got everything cleaned up and uh, Weather's still looking absolutely beautiful out here, so I figure I might as well go and try to find that other pond. My map shows a carry into it, but I never found it this morning or last night while paddling around by where it should be. So I'm going to walk this trail that kind of leads around the lake here, see if I can cut across it that way. And if not, I'll just bushwhack out to it. I doubt it's going to take that though. I'm probably just missing the trail somewhere. So I'm going to get a bag loaded up, go look for it, and then I'll come back for the canoe. Alright, well, there's enough water for me to get out here. I just saw some bait fish. Still really shallow here. Wow, I hope this wasn't for nothing. I hope this gets deeper out here. Yeah, I think I finally found some deeper water out here. It's got to be like 15 or 16 feet here. I brought the depth finder and everything out with me, but kind of don't feel like hooking it up for such a small body of water and being unsure how long I'll be here. We'll see. It's definitely no surface vegetation over here anymore. I'm not getting hung up, so I'll give it a go. I got one. I love the podcast. I enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed your book. I'm also at the stage in my life right now. Wow, that's a really nice brookie, actually. That's not that small. actually a really nice fish. Holy cripes. Just gonna wet my hands real quick. Oh. All right, he actually popped off and swam away. All right, good enough. 
That was a nice brookie. I wish I could have shown it to you. Hey, we got another one here. Just trying to turn off the podcast. Oh, nice fish. That's a nice brook trout. This one's actually coming back with me, so that's why I didn't wet my hands. Look at that. Nice fish. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna dispatch him real quick and uh, we're gonna get out of here and back to camp. Yeah, made it back in pretty easy time. I, Cause you know, I didn't double carry this time. I, there was no scouting. I just threw the bag on my back Dragged the canoe up to where you saw, and my battery ran out. So I had to wait till I got back here to replace it. But yeah, back here in one piece. Got that trout rested in the water for a moment. Hoping no snapping turtles get it. Because, uh, well, what happened here is pretty crazy. When I was trolling on that last pond, it looked like I got a bite. I set the hook, and... The braid looks cut. I don't know if a snapping turtle grabbed the whole damn wobbler and worm. I don't know what happened, but I lost one. Real shame, too. But can't complain. Two very nice brook trout. One of them for dinner. I mean, what more can you ask for, man? My gosh. Oh, what a fun trip. That was a neat little... I don't know. I don't know what you want to call that kind of bushwhack kind of. I mean, there was clearly a trail there at one point, but it was so overgrown and destroyed. I, I saw no actual clear launch onto that pond that was on. Oh, that was fun. Be nice to get back here, have a little snack, and uh, it'll be time for dinner soon enough. I got some wood processed up, got everything taken care of at camp, got a few hours before I'll feel like cooking dinner, so might as well get back out there and do some fishing, huh?
think we got something here. Aw, oh, just a small little bluegill. Aw, oh, man. Got me all excited, buddy. And you stole my worm. <laughs> I guess it's something. Wow. Look at that. Holy cripes. What an amazing day. Look at that, got a nice fire going. Oh, yeah. Don't mind just sitting by that for a minute. Yeah, so I actually forgot that I had aluminum foil with me. So what I did was I wrapped the fish up with some slices of butter in there. I've got the bacon left over the, that Stephanie didn't want to eat that she said was too fatty that I've had in the cooler. Stuff that inside of him there, put salt and pepper on it, wrapped it up, and I've got it set over here near the hot part of the fire. And once this burns down into coals, I'll just lay it right in it. Should cook it up real nice. And as a side, I figured these were so good last night. I just go, might as well go with the uh, sour cream and chives mashed potatoes. They are America's favorite, aren't they? They're my favorite when I'm on a trip like this, that's for sure. Yeah, just building the fire back up now. Letting that cool down a little bit. Oh, I can't wait to eat. This all smells so good. Maybe I have to burn my mouth a little bit and dig in. Oh, oh, oh. Hot but good. Whew. Definitely a chilly night. Well, it's that time of night. Got some chocolate melt in. Got my stick. a little dessert, huh? I think I deserve it after today. Well, that's going to do it for me tonight. Had a few s'mores, had dinner, got everything all picked up. Fire's burning low. It's probably time to crawl into that sleeping bag under the lean-to, listen to these loons and owls and coyotes, and fall asleep. Man, it's been an awesome day. I think tomorrow I'm going to pack up early and uh, we're going to move on to another one of these ponds over here. Maybe, I don't know, maybe one of those northern ones that's supposed to have brookies. be nice to just keep catching a few of those before the season closes, you know? Anyway, good night, guys. I'll see you in the morning. Man, another beautiful morning out here. Oh. Again, a little bit of a cold one, but, you know, it is that time of year.
so it's to be expected and right now i'm just kind of puttering around getting stuff packed up getting ready to make the move Looks like I got everything all cleaned up. Just got to bring these last couple things down with me. Fire is doused. Any garbage I've taken out with me. Left a little bit of wood for the next folk who come back here. Which in all honesty really could be me because I have, I was planning to come stay back here on Thursday. So might have just saved myself a little work. If no one's here. But... Uh, yeah, I've left this place in just as good, if not better condition than I found it. So let's get a move on. Yeah, I decided to take a look at the campsite on this lake before I moved on from it. I mean, there's lots of wood around. It's got a very nice view. And a fire pit, but man, I don't know where you'd put a tent here. There's a lot of angled ground. I mean, maybe a small backpacking tent could go right here. And even hammock camping, I mean, maybe this tree to this tree, or one of these over here. Huh? It'd be tough. You could make do with it, though, if you had to. But uh, my journey is going to continue here. So I'm going to hop right back in and uh, do a few laps around this lake and see if we can come up with anything. Wow, those damn beavers. I was originally going to go through here or send my canoe through here, but uh, I guess the beavers have made that impossible. Wow, they've really, they've really built that up. It doesn't even look like I could yank it out of there. Oh, man. All right. Well, we'll just haul our gear up over the little road here. Our gear. I'll haul my gear up over the little road here. Yeah, so I found a nice little campsite here. And I figured I'd just do up a real quick, easy lunch of some cheese, crackers, and pepperoni. Get camp set up and get right back on the water fishing. Had a few bites, but no hookups while I was out there. So, hope we can find something.
I'm not sure if I've got a fish here or what. No, I definitely do. My battery died. But uh, you didn't miss anything special. It was just a big old bullhead. I don't know what he was doing that far up near the surface to hit the wobbler, but uh, that's, I knew it was something weird. It wasn't fighting like a trout. Something just bent this rod over. This has got to be a trout. I haven't seen it yet. Is it a bass? What the heck? No, it's a huge sunny. What the heck? I guess that might be all that's in this lake I'm on right now. The one I'm camped on is supposed to have rainbows and landlocks, so I guess maybe I should go back there. Got me all excited. Well, guys, I know it hasn't been that exciting of a day fishing-wise, but got to explore some fun new lakes and ponds, paddle around, had a beautiful sunset, the wildlife. I mean, it's hard to complain about a day like that. It's been a nice night here sitting by the fire. I've had a few s'mores, had a nice dinner, but uh, I think at this point I'm going to call it a night. Try to wake up early and get right back on the main lake where I had luck with those rainbows before. Fish there a bit and uh, see what we want to do from there. Whether I go continue exploring new water or stick with that. It'll all depend on the fishing, like I said before. But, uh, yeah, I'm about ready to pack it in here. Good night, guys. I'll see you in the morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Definitely a little bit warmer today. We got another beautiful, beautiful day out there. I'm gonna try to get packed up pretty quick here and uh, get right back on the water get back into the lake we started on before and uh, try to catch a few rainbow trout huh? or landlocked salmon. I'd really like to get a little bit bigger one than that one that uh, I caught over by the lean-to, but either way, there should be plenty of rainbow trout over there to catch, so yeah, just gonna get everything together, get it in the bags, and uh, get on the move here. Hey, we got something with a little fight here.
Now it could be another big sunny, but it's not fighting like that. It's kind of fighting me like a trout, in all honesty. Oh, it is. Oh, it's a beautiful brookie. Try to get a measurement here. That's looking to be about an 18 inch brook trout. Look at that. Wow. Right back down to the bottom. Beautiful release. Beautiful fish. What a way to start the day. Wow. Wow. I, uh, I thought I just lost my worm way out here in the middle of the deep lake. And I reeled it back up to myself slowly. And there was a monster trout following it nipping at the tail of it but not taking it and he swam around the boat a couple times swam after the worm a little bit and never took it oh man this is really making it tough to decide where i want to camp tonight I gotta think for a minute. You know, I you know, I think I've made my decision. I think I'm gonna camp on this lake and fish tonight. Only because the wind is so favorable today. I mean, there's almost none. And if it's windy tomorrow, I mean, coming back here, it would just be tough to fish. Whereas it seems like this would be pretty easy and nice to fish today, so. If I hang out here and it ends up being windy tomorrow, I can just carry into the other, I mean, it's a small carry too, like 0.1 mile carry into the other lake that I planned on hitting today. Because I do still want to check it out, especially after catching a brook trout in that one lake that I had no information on. Now I'm just keyed up on thinking that maybe there's brook trout in all these little lakes and ponds that have no information on them. But... That's probably wishful thinking as well. But I really think the smart idea is going to be to camp here tonight. Fish here and uh, go with what I said there. What is this helicopter doing? Is it going to land back there? At first it looked like it was about to land on the pond I just came from. enough about aviation it seems like he's trying to find somewhere to land though or I don't know I 
think it landed in the parking area and is taking off again. If the lake that I just left just got stocked with trout, I don't know. I know they do fall stocking and it would happen around this time of year. What the heck? Well, as you can see, I am back in the lean-to. I uh, actually met up with the guy who was in it, who I spoke to yesterday, Jim. Uh, if you happen to be watching this, man, it was awesome talking to you. He was a real cool guy. He's done all kinds of guiding, canoe trips, biking, hiking. Uh, a true, true American adventurer. There's no better way to put it. He had such an insane life story. It was really cool talking to him. And uh, he did confirm that he saw that helicopter dropping fish. So these are indeed stocked waters. Now, it would be really hard to argue that those were stocked brookies that I caught. The 18, 15, 16 inch brookies that I caught, I really don't, I don't know if those are fish that have, that were stocked when they were tiny and grown here. I don't, I don't know. The colors on them were so pronounced that, uh, I would be hard pressed to say that those were stocked fish, but apparently they do stock the waters here, which totally surprised me. But, uh, yeah, Jim was leaving right as I arrived here and we talked, hung out and chatted. He shared some, uh, some of the summer sausage that he had with me. We cut some up. I had some crackers and cheese and all that. Uh, it was, it was nice sitting here talking with him for a bit. So now I've just been working, collecting a little firewood. He didn't end up using what I left under there. So I'll use that and drag the big piece of pine that it came from back here, saw that up and leave it for the next guy. Or, I mean, who knows? Maybe, it, depending on the fishing, maybe I'll just stay here again tomorrow and then move on to the pond. I'm going to meet Stephanie on Friday. We'll see. That was quite a big fish that followed my wobbler up today. That's what makes me almost just want to keep hammering this place. But I got a few things to do around here first. Get all my bed set up, get everything ready like that, and uh, then we'll go from there. I got camp all set up, my bed all set up. Got some firewood ready for later. Basically just gotta throw one of my starters in there and it'll be rip roaring ready to go. Kindling, a little bit thicker stuff over there. I guess with all those responsibilities taken care of, there's really only one thing to do. Get out there and fish. It's a little windy, but uh, not too bad. I mean, I paddled over here with a single blade and wind worse than this, so I think I can get out there, get back off that point I was fishing before, and see if I can pick up another one of them big rainbows out there. Man, what a gorgeous area. It's like the perfect time of year for a trip like this. That perfect fall weather, those nice beautiful trout, those mountains rising behind it all. Hey, we 
we got a nice fish on. That's either a really good sized rainbow or a landlock. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Stay down. Wow. I can't get a look at it because the sun's in my eyes. I'm just going to give it line when it... This is a good fish. I think it's a big rainbow. Oh man. Holy cripes, I got it in the net. That's a big rainbow. That's a huge rainbow. Holy cripes, look at that. We're looking at a 15 inch fish there. I mean, by no means a monster, but wow. I'll give him a moment, he, he fought hard. I tried to land him as quick as possible so that he's not completely tiring himself out. These fish fight like athletes, man. I mean, they're, they're giving it 110% there trying to struggle to survive. So I'm just going to let him sit in the water here. I'm not going to rock him back and forth or anything. I listened to this guy, guy Dave Cumling, talk a lot about safely releasing a fish. Oh, sweet, and it worked. I just kind of held him there for a moment, not tight or anything, just letting him regain himself a little bit. And he took off. I really didn't think I was going to land that fish once. I mean, I was confident while I was fighting him on only one line. When he got wrapped in the second, I thought that was game over, which was would have been really disappointing because that was, that was the biggest rainbow I've ever caught. There is no way you can tell me that that trout that I just caught was a stocked fish. I mean, I know that rainbow trout aren't native here, but I feel like that had to be a trout that was born here and grew here. I mean, this thing was so chunky and so colorful. And so were all the brookies I caught. I just, all the stocked fish that I've ever caught, all the stocked rainbows and all the stocked brookies I've ever caught, they looked faded and their fins always had damage on them somewhere. I don't know. What a day, what a day. I mean, I know these are only end up being maybe one, two, three fish days for me here, but the quality of the fish I'm catching, the nights I'm having, the views, the days, everything, it's a sum of all these experiences that make up this just being an absolutely amazing trip. I mean, my God, I know I've said it for a couple of them, but this really might be my favorite one yet. It's tough to decide, but right now it feels truly like the best trip I've ever been on. Man. What a little gem we have here with these Adirondacks. I cannot believe it. Dinner roll. Tonight it's going to be creamy chicken broccoli.
That should be good. Yeah, this is just about done here. Oh yeah, that thickened right up. Oh, that's gonna be good. It smells great. It originally called for tuna, but uh, I don't like taking fish on fishing trips with me. I did it once at St. Regis, and I mean, you guys saw that video, so. <laughs> I, I, I mean, not to be superstitious, but I didn't bring any fish on this trip, and look how it's gone. <laughs> hey, I got a nice fire going here. Once that cools down, I'm gonna sit here and chow down a bit. Yeah, now I think it's time to just crawl into this sleeping bag, read a little bit, and uh, be getting up early to move on to the next lake. Or, you know, whatever I end up doing tomorrow. Definitely fishing, whatever happens. But I think we'll probably move on to a new campsite. Want to explore a little more. But uh, that is tomorrow. And tonight, I'm going to rest up. So I'll catch you all in the morning. Man, another beautiful morning out here. I have to say it just every morning because every morning I'm shocked. I think tomorrow's gonna be the end of it though, sadly. It looks like the weather calls for some rain. But uh, today it's supposed to get up to the 70s, which is shocking for how cold it is waking up this morning. But uh, I don't know, according to the weather, this morning's warmer than a couple of the other ones I've had, but I don't know, I tend to disagree. I'm actually just firing up the stove now, gonna get a little hot chocolate going little breakfast going and uh, see what the day holds from there. Oh yeah. That's gonna hit the spot. Eggs got a little frozen. Jeez. All right, so I'm here at the carry into the next lake I want to get into. Got this all set up here and stowed away. I think I've got it balanced. We'll see. All my stuff in here. And we just got a quick little carry through here into the next one.
Yeah, the wind has definitely picked up a little bit, but it's not terrible out here yet. So hopefully it doesn't get too much worse than this and we didn't waste the whole trip out here. Get a fish either way though. Gotta give it a try. Got a pretty decent fish on. Sorry for the podcast. I don't want to. I don't want to lose him. I'm listening to uh, Bill Heavey audiobook. This thing just jumped out of the water. I think it's a big rainbow again. Whoa! Stay out of the air. really have some fight to them. That's crazy. He dove right into the net. Rainbow trout. Wow. All right. Oh, wow. He just shot right down to the bottom. He was ready to go. This fish just followed my wobbler up to the surface and then grabbed it. He's pretty small. I think I can just... Oh, it's a small brookie. Let's put him in the net and make sure he's okay. Not huge at all. He swam away. Awesome. We got another one here. Wow. Maybe I should have moved to camp over here. Jeez. Feels like another good one. off right at the boat. Whoa. Oh, he got off. Man, had the camera facing the wrong way. <laughs> oh, these little guys. It was definitely another small brookie. I think this one just caught a fish on the drop. I closed the bale on the rod holder and it immediately started bouncing a bit. Feels like another small brookie. Small rainbow. Now he's got some fight, now that he knows the net's there. All right, wet my hands real quick. Despite the fact that these fish were probably dropped out of a helicopter at some point in their life. Oh wow, he took that deep. Oh boy. 
I'll give you a look at them here quick. This one might be coming back with us. That's pretty deep. Yeah, he was hooked real bad. I I already, I mean, I before I even finished getting the hook out of him, I dispatched him just to put him out of his misery. I'm sorry, buddy. Thank you for feeding me. I'm happy that it's a smaller fish that this happened to. Uh, does look like probably one that was stocked here. So, that makes me feel a lot better about it. And uh, I guess with this heat, it's probably time for me to get out of here. I'll get this fish back to camp, get him cooked. Is there something hitting this? Huh. Look at that, a two for one. At this point, I guess I've caught just about everything you can catch in this lake. All right, I just got done cleaning that fish up on shore and making sure None of the parts ended up in the water, but uh, maybe one of you can answer this for me. Why can't we just throw the fish guts in the water? I mean, isn't that a normal part of the ecosystem? Don't we leave a deer's gut pile in the, in the ecosystem for something to eat? I mean, it seems like fish probably die and are consumed in the water naturally. I mean, Mother Nature is the most unkind master of all, so... I don't know, maybe one of you could tell me why Why do we have to take the guts 150 feet away from the water to get rid of them? Unless that's not a thing anymore, but that's what grandpa taught me when I was a kid, so that's always what I've done. Thinking about it now, though, I don't, I mean, I read the fishing regs each year from front to back. I don't know, I'll have to look into it when I get home. But, uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna quickly get this fish back there because it's definitely nowhere near as cool as that day I had the brookie. This thing will spoil in the heat and I don't want to kill something and not eat it. Yeah, that rainbow trout's cooking up nicely in the ghee here. Just getting some water, starting to boil for the mashed potatoes. Oh man, it's gonna be quite the feast. Oh, that smells great. Well, had a good lunch, hung around camp for a while. Rested and read my book a little bit. And it's about five o'clock now. Figure I might as well get out there for an hour or two. Try to see what the evening bite holds for me. And then uh, tomorrow, we'll be moving. We, I don't know why I keep saying that. I will be moving back over to the, uh, to the first pond that I caught that first brookie on, that real nice one. And I'm gonna camp out there, meet Stephanie tomorrow night, and then Saturday morning we'll be packing right up and heading off to Long Lake. It's gonna be exciting. I don't know how much of that trip, if any, is gonna end up on the GoPro. I'm down to 41 minutes of recording left, so I'm gonna try to be sparing with it. We'll see. Got a nice fish here, I think. Is it swimming at me or did I lose it? 
No, it's still on there. Or no hominids knew what the hell he was talking about. Yeah, it's a real nice fish there. Oh, it's a landlocked salmon. It's a big one. Look at that beast. Wow. Oh boy, he's floating. Wow, that was such a nice fish. Holy cripes, he did swim away. That's the biggest landlocked salmon I've ever caught. I. I, the one I caught at Lower Saranac was was nowhere near as big as that, for sure. Wow, he didn't even hit it that hard. Wow, it was once I set the hook into him that I really felt the weight of the fish. When uh, when he was hitting it, it was I it was just slight little taps on my line. I didn't know. I didn't know what to think there. I thought it was just going to be a little rainbow. And then even the way it fought me up to the up to the boat, he didn't. Uh, either that, he he did feel like he was fighting kind of hard at first, and then maybe he was swimming at the boat, and that's why it felt so easy. But yeah, once he got in that net, oh, he was not happy. Oh, another nice fish. This might be the best day we've had here. This is a literal. I mean, I don't. There's no other way to describe it. This is a banner day trout fishing this is one I'll remember for a long time hey it looks like we got a last minute fish here might be a sunfish though he kind of hit that aggressively It's kind of dark to see. Yeah, sunfish. I've gotten to know what they what it looks like when one of them hit. Oh no, you're not stealing my worm. Yeah, I've got probably 30 minutes of sun left, so I'm going to start paddling back into the bay where the lean-to is. Slowly troll around there. Oh, I got hung up on the bottom there. And, uh, yeah, just see if maybe I can come up with something. I mean, there are, it, there, it is deep back there near where I'm camped, so there should be the possibility of fish, but I found that they really concentrate out here. Oh. Maybe that was a fish, or I got snaked at some point. Well, I think it's all good now. But man, there was something pretty big walking around back there and not really deterred by me banging pots and pans and yelling and sh stuff. I'm pretty sure I heard it walk away. I'm about to get a fire going. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I mean, most things get the hell out of here when you start making some noise. And, uh, whatever that was didn't. And, uh, my light kind of reflected off something's eyes. I don't know. <sighs> what the heck, man? I clean all my dishes. I, I put everything away.
I'm going to have to store this stuff a little further from the lean-to tonight than I usually do. Usually the last thing I do before going to bed is go hang stuff in the tree and put stuff, uh, you know, away from here. But maybe I'm not doing it far enough. Maybe I shouldn't be cooking stuff like fish at camp. Huh. Well, I'm going to get a fire going and uh, just keep an eye out here. I mean, I'm not really not scared I, I just don't want a bear to get my food i'm not scared for my safety i don't want a bear to come over here and uh, unafraid of me i mean because what am i going to do at that point if it's not going to run away and it's trying to get at my stuff so uh yeah i'm going to try to get a quick clean not too smelly dinner together here get a fire going and uh yeah, just take some extra precautions tonight. Jeez. I mean, that'd be a terrible way for such an awesome trip to end with a goddamn bear having to be shot because it ate my food. I'd feel horrible. Yeah. No sounds, no sightings. I went down to the canoe and uh, splashed a bunch of water in there and kind of washed it out a bit because, I mean, there have been fish flopping around in there and... There's some blood in there from having uh, gutted fish it with me, you know, as I traveled and stuff like that. Just things I didn't really think about, you know? I mean, there's so all the all the fishing stuff. I mean, even the smell of my clothes, probably. I, I had fish flapping all over me. Things I never really thought about till I sat here after that, so. Just have to, gonna have to be extra cautious in the future. No biggie. And uh, yeah, got a fire going. Gonna get some food in me here soon, and uh, before too long, it'll be off to bed and moving on to that brook trout pond tomorrow, which should be really nice. I mean, it's gonna be rainy, but uh, I'm sure we'll find some windows to fish. Well, I guess it was a given that this nice weather we had wouldn't hold out forever. It started raining at like 3 a.m. last night. It kept up pretty steadily till Till about now it's starting to lighten up, so I'm getting packed up. After you know, just waking up, but immediately letting the air out, getting my stuff together, make some oatmeal or something easy, and uh we'll be making the move to the next pond. Yeah, so got everything mostly put away at this point. Bags packed up. Made a little oatmeal for breakfast quick. Gonna eat that up. Get everything cleaned up in here. There's a nice convenient broom I'll sweep out the lean-to. Left a little bit of wood down there for the next guy. Just, you know, try to leave the place in better condition than I found it. Rain's not too bad today so far, so... Hopefully that keeps up. I can get over to my next site, get everything set up, and uh, we'll be in business. Look at those mountains covered in mist like that. Reminds me of Lord of the Rings. I know it's super nerdy, but that's immediately what I think. Oh, that's so cool. I still cannot believe that bear last night. Absolutely no fear of me rattling pots and pans, screaming at it, yelling at it. What it took was me moving at it, actually not keeping my distance and coming at him a little bit that made him not even, not even like he was spooked, just leisurely head up the hill. Yeah, I've got most of the gear over to the pond I'm going to be camping on now. I just have to go back for the canoe and the barrel, and that'll do it. And I know that you're thinking that this is way too much stuff, and you're totally right. Stephanie and I had a plan that a lot of this was going to go back with her, and I was going to be doing a much lighter trip where I was basically just going to be... I mean, it was going to be double carries, but, I mean, the second carry I had to do was just gonna be the barrel.
thought I was going to be able to get out and fish. I guess not. What the heck? Yeah, so I got the campsite all set up. Found a place for the tent. Got my boots over here. Dragged a little bit of firewood over. Had a little lunch. And now I'm kind of just hunkering down in the tent. I'm sure you can hear this wind or you know see it blowing these trees blowing the waves blowing the water i was really hoping to get out there and try to catch a few brookies but i don't know it's starting to let up a little bit here maybe maybe around six o'clock i could get out there for a quick hour and then i'd have to be right back in because i gotta go meet stephanie but uh yeah, you know, I don't mind taking a little bit of a rest day here. We caught a lot of nice fish, had a lot of fun, you know. It's, it's hard to be disappointed with one day of bad weather. Well, didn't end up coming up with anything while fishing out there. But Stephanie is here now. Hi. Getting the fire going. I got a whole bunch of wood processed up since I couldn't really fish today I just got a whole big pile of it here ready for us not that we're gonna be able to be up that late and uh, we're both pretty hungry so I'm gonna dig in the barrel here get some dinner going hang up with the fire a bit relax and then uh, it'll be off to Long Lake in the morning for us well fire starting to burn low We've had some nice s'mores, nice dinner, a nice night hanging out here in the woods together. But, uh, yeah, I think it's about time to crawl into these sleeping bags, get nice and warm, and pass right out. I just wanted to uh, say, since this is probably the end of the video here, thank you for watching. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this trip. I had a ton of fun filming it. And uh, yeah, just like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you on the next one.